Whenever I talk to patients, and often when I speak to doctors about non-VKA oral anticoagulants, one of the first thing that crops up is these new drugs don't have any antidote, as though uh, this makes these drugs very dangerous. And uh, patients have often been primed to say this by other doctors. And I always find it a bit of a challenge to work out exactly how to deal with this. But <clears throat> I think we are going to have some antidotes to these drugs. We don't have them specific antidotes right now. And of course, we can deal with most of the bleeding issues. First of all, of course, we can just use the standard uh, methods for dealing with bleeding problems, particularly if it's only minor bleeding. All we do is stop the drug or delay the next dose of the drug and use standard methods such as uh, pressure uh, on the bleeding point and so on and so forth. And even if the <coughs> bleeding is rather more severe than that, a major bleeding of some kind, we can replace blood volume, we can replace uh, the uh, uh, red cells and so on and so forth, and we can generally manage bleeding in a standard way. It, it's only, I think, if we've got life-threatening bleeding that we would really like to have specific antidotes. And of course there are situations like that, <clears throat> but at the moment uh, we have uh, some rather indirect or non-specific ways in which we can manage that. We might give, for example, prothrombin complex concentrate uh, or other activated clotting factors in order to try and uh, stem the hemorrhage. And in the case of uh, dabigatran, of course, we can use dialysis. But what I think uh, the patients who talk to me have forgotten and the doctors who challenge me have forgotten is that the half-life of these new oral anticoagulants is relatively short, about 12 hours. And therefore, if you wait for a while, the anticoagulation level is going to fall quite dramatically. Uh, and it's going to fall much more so than it will fall with warfarin. And therefore, with warfarin, you ha often have to take a much more active intervention. There is theoretically an antidote, uh, vitamin K, of course, you can give that intravenously, but it doesn't immediately uh, reverse the activity of warfarin. It makes available a substrate from which coagulation factors can be produced. And that, of course, takes some time. And often you have to give, in addition to that, some uh, uh, prothrombin complex concentrate or other clotting factors in order to reduce uh, the um, level of anticoagulation promptly. So the question really is whether with these new agents we need antidotes and when we will get them. And I think that most people agree that uh, we probably need them and it would be very nice to have them but that we probably wouldn't need to use them very often after all the major trials with these agents all took place without any antidote specific antidote being available but now there are antidotes in development for all of these agents we have uh, a so-called decoy factor 10A, which is uh, inactive and which can pick up the uh, factor 10A inhibitor and uh, remove it essentially from the circulation and allow natural factor 10A to be again a coagulation factor. And this is called andexanate alpha, and it's been tried with all of the factor 10A agents, uh, in inhibitor agents, and uh, a phase three trial has been completed already with one of them, with a pixaban, and it won't be long before it's completed with other uh, agents. And so I think we can look forward to seeing this drug in not too distant future, another year or 18 months, I, I would say we would see this. And then, of course, we've got a different form of uh, approach 
for dabigatran, we have uh, an antibody for dabigatran, an antibody fragment, and it's called Idaru Susimab. And again, it works very quickly, and it works essentially by mopping up the uh, dabigatran and uh, allowing uh, coagulation to proceed normally. And that has completed phase one studies and started uh, phase three studies. And so it won't be very long before we have that agent as well. And then there's an interesting <coughs> molecule, which is described as a small synthetic molecule uh, made by a company called Perisphere. Uh, and its name is Aripazine. And Aripazine works quickly, apparently, <coughs> and works against all forms of anticoagulation. So we're going to have antidotes pretty quickly. Uh, what they will cost, I don't know. They may be very expensive. <clears throat> or it may be the policy of the company to try and sell these antidotes relatively cheaply and uh, keep the profit uh, from the, uh, the anticoagulant and sink some of the profit in providing the reversibility agent uh, relatively cheaply. And if we have these new reversibility agents, I can foresee various situations in which they're used. Obviously, the cheaper they are, the more often they will be used. But as I said, the clinical trials really didn't uh, need much of this kind of uh, reversibility to be used in order to show the superiority or non-inferiority in other cases of these non-VKA oral anticoagulants. So, Freak, do we need these reversibility agents? I think, uh, I think so, as you pointed out. But to come back to the trials, um, the current trials we have seen in atrial fibrillation, the, uh, there was also a reduction in fatal bleeding with Novax, where we don't have an antidote for, at least in the trials, uh, compared to warfarin, of which we think we have an effective antidote. So my first question that came up when I saw the first molecules... Um, passing by, is do they really work in stopping bleeding? Uh, that is, of course, uh, a matter of a clinical trial, but can we do clinical trials um, ethically in a bleeding patient, not in, uh, in phase two or phase one situations? And I think it's very difficult to do a randomized controlled trial in a patient uh, severely bleeding, and therefore you only will have exploratory um, uh, data coming from those trials. Um, for instance, with warfarin, if you give PCC, then in my experience at least, the bleeding goes on and on, although the INR comes back to normal or normal, uh, nearly normal. The bleeding goes on. And therefore, I would like to see whether these specific antidotes really stop the bleeding. <laughs> in John, there's a, just to muddy the waters a bit further, uh, if you look at the Averroes trial, where half of the patients were randomized to Apixaba. So they had an anticoagulant, a NOAC, on board. And the other half was randomized to aspirin. So they had presumably completely normal plasma coagulation. But the rate of major bleeds in that trial is the same in both groups. Um, so I, in a way, I, I, I do think we want to have control over the things that we cause ourselves. And that is part of the psychology behind the demand for an antidote and and I'm not saying that this is not a correct demand but I think we 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 should probably step one step back and think about uh, what what are actually the causes of bleeding I mean we are not going to stop the accident with an antidote um, and then we will still need as you said hemostasis and then and, and all the local and even surgical measures um, but even if we had an antidote will we get better than treating Averroes in aspirin and um yes but the 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 patients are very concerned about this. Do patients talk to you about this, yes, uh, Johnny? Yes, yes. Do you think if we had an antidote and we could say, oh, yes, we do have uh, a way of dealing with uh, bleeding, that it would make it more acceptable to patients? I think it would be reassuring for many patients. 
and for many GPs also, because uh, as you said, some patients are coming saying, oh, my GPs have said me that these drugs are dangerous because there is no antidote. So I agree with all the points you have developed. Uh, I'm not sure we will use it so often, but uh, it's interesting on a psychological point of view uh, to, to have these drugs. And I hope that when these drugs will be presented to the agencies for, uh, for the approval, uh, that uh, it will be made, I would say, relatively quickly. Because uh, in my knowledge, the trial at this time are trial trying to show changes in the coagulation test, but not, as you said, Frick, uh, uh, regarding the uh, clinical events, because it's maybe very, very difficult to make trials to be able to demonstrate an interest in terms of clinical events. So I hope we will have these drugs quickly, not so expensive, uh, as you said, John, and uh, uh, to be able to reassure our patients. And Clearly, it would be useful in some very uh, dramatic situations like uh, emergency uh, and trauma and traumatism and so on. Uh, but for everyday practice, yes, I will be. I would be happy to have it to be able to reassure my patients. Yes. And, and Marco, you, you're you're an electrophysiologist. Would you like to have an antidote? I don't think we really need it. Uh, it, it I, I think. Uh, in general, we need a lot of knowledge transfer to patients and and and, and medical doctors and uh, and lay press on, on 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 this issue. Yes, of course, we will see bleedings when we are treating patients with uh, anticoagulants. But uh, as Paulus pointed out, the bleeding rate is very low, and I think the best way to treat bleeding is to prevent bleeding. And uh, no works have been shown to cause less bleedings. And if we compare to vitamin K, uh, generally I've been told, yes, but we, we have vitamin K. And I think uh, I, I like to refer to the half-life of the NOACs as the vitamin K of these, these NOACs. Uh, so I, I don't think we really need them. In the trials, there were no uh, antidotes and the results were, uh, were very favorable for NOACs. And... Yes, of course, we can think of situations where it might come in handy, but those will be very exceptional. I think of uh, cerebral bleeding. Well, cerebral bleeding with the NOAX is extremely low, so it, it will be, I think, red, uh, randomized trials will be impossible to, to do. It, it, I, I think it may serve, if we have NOAX, it, it merely may serve as, as, a, as a way to assure... Uh, lay press and, and patient, but I don't think in clinical practice we really need it. Raf, let me put a theoretical point to you. Supposing we were able <clears throat> to lengthen the half-life of a NOAC by some technique, injecting it, say, in a depot formulation or something like that, would we then need the antidote? Would that be another strategy? Well, if we have the antidote, then you, I think we can think of uh, devising drug delivery systems in order to increase the half-life of uh, the NOAX because this will uh, give us a kind of backup. Uh, that uh, So this is an interesting concept, I think, that could move forward the entire uh, area of uh, uh, reverberating some way on the on the idea of having a short-acting active anticoagulants and transforming it to a longer-acting one because we have a way to tackle the problem. <clears throat> but I just wanted to, uh, to highlight one situation in which I really would love to have uh, an antidote. And I think uh, I'm uh, going into an area which is not mine, but it's the area of electrophysiology. When you do uh, ablations, you have uh, the occasional risk of uh, perforation of, uh, of the Pericardium. atrial wall and uh, the hemopericardium. In, uh, in such conditions, uh, if you have a patient that, uh, as uh, more and more is done, remains on uh, continuous anticoagulation, uh, you would probably like to have something to reverse uh, the effect very quickly because these are uh, life-threatening situations. And so this is one of the... Ideally, I would love to have 
a, a, an antidote with a very long shelf life because I will not use it most of the time, but I would like to have it uh, uh, ready in case uh, such a situation... And what do you think would be the situation if the antidote were very cheap? Do you think it would be used a lot more for all sorts of reasons? <laughs> Coming up to surgery, why not reverse the... <laughs> But then you, we may we we may return to the problem of uh, too much reversing and uh, uh, lack of protection. So I think this can lead also to an abuse. So again, I think we're pretty agreed that uh, an antidote would be a good idea and it would be reassuring to our patients and, and to many of the doctors that refer patients to us. But we don't foresee that the antidote will be used extensively. It wouldn't be nice to have on the shelf, but it should sit there, be able to sit there for a while uh, and not expire. And it should be relatively cheap. Thank you.